Today, we're gonna to try to figure out if adding heat to stack trays will provide us with any benefit during the germination process. So stay tuned for the test. In a previous video, we grew sunflower microgreens and we added heat to them. And what we found is that by adding heat that was eight degrees warmer than the ambient temperature of our grow space, we shaved about one day off of our grow time, which is huge considering sunflowers only take six to 10 days to grow. What we're trying to figure out in this test is we're gonna do the same thing of adding heat to the bottom of this. And we wanna see if that heat will rise through these four commercially stacked trays up to the top tray and provide us a benefit throughout all of these trays without having to rotate or reverse the order that they're stacked. As you can see, we have four trays, both in different colors. We have some pink trays and some white trays. The pink trays are gonna go on our shelf that is our cold shelf. It's gonna have no, no kind of heater underneath of it. And this is just gonna go on that shelf just like that. The white trays are going to go on our heat mat. Before we put all these trays onto their designated shelves, let's quickly talk about what each one of these trays has. Each one of these trays has been seeded with 125 grams of sunflower per tray, and they're all being grown on a medium that is coca coir. As you can see, all these trays are the exact same in that regard. And I'm really excited to see how this test is gonna turn out. So I've already watered all of these. These went through a one hour soak process that was not pH balanced. And all we've gotta do right now is put some lids on them and get some weight on top and then put these onto their shelves. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. First thing we're gonna do, add our trays to the top. And now we're gonna take a 15 pound paver. And we're gonna put one on each one of these trays sets. Now that we have our paver on top, we're gonna to put these on their designated shelves. So again, the pink trays are going to go on the cold shelf. So the cold shelf is gonna be my bottom shelf. That way there's no heat from the lights or anything happening. And we're just gonna see how this germinates below this heat mat right here. The reason that we're doing it below this heat mat right here is because heat rises and we don't want the heat to affect this process or this trial. Now I've gotta take our white trays and we're gonna set it right next to our thermometer right here. So this is our little probe that's gonna measure the temperature of this heat mat. And I currently have it set to 86 and you can see we're really close to that. So everything is good. Okay, we've got all these sunflowers placed on their designated shelves. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come out each day. We're gonna pull these off the shelf, take a look at them and then put them back on in the exact order that they're on. So if Mandy, if you'll come over here, I'll show you. We have each one of these trays labeled with numbers. The bottom one being number one, Second one, number two, third tray, number three, and the fourth tray, number four. And that is the same for this bottom set down here. We have number one, two, three, and four for all these trays. So that's all for now. I will see you guys tomorrow for the first update. It is day one of our sunflower heat mat experiment. Let me get these pulled off the shelf. We're gonna start with our cold shelf because we can only fit four of these trays at a time. So let's take a peek at the germination here and see how everything's looking. You know what we could do? Let's just do it this way, just to kind of take a look. So I do see some of the radicals poking out, which is great. That means we're getting germination across this tray. You see that a lot of those radicals are beginning to poke out from all of these trays. So this is what we're kind of used to. This is what we expect out of sunflower and everything's looking good. Now let's see if the heat mat has added any benefits so far. I can feel the warmth on the bottom, but I can't really hardly feel it much up elsewhere. So again, same thing, we're getting the radicals popping out already. Everything's looking good. They do look a little bit longer than the other shelf. You can see how they're kind of starting to curl out and actually dig down into the medium in some places. So it does seem like the heat is speeding up the process. And again, same thing right here. We're seeing a lot of these radicals popping out. And everything is looking really good. We're seeing lots of moisture on all of these trays still, which is really good. That actually means that this heat is rising up from all that moisture you can see. Just to give you a comparison, look at this. Look at all this moisture on this. And let me go grab the lid from the other one. And taking a look at the lid on this one, you can see the difference in moisture here. We have just a little bit of moisture on our cold shelf, but on our heat shelf, you can see how much condensation is happening from that heat rising up through these trays. So that to me right there, seeing that on the top tray shows me that the heat is probably doing its job. So we're not gonna see too much of a difference on day one. I'm gonna go ahead and get these put back onto the shelf. And then tomorrow and the day after is when we're gonna really see the explosive growth probably happening. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. It is day two of this heat mat sunflower experiment. So let's take a look at our growth. Remember the pink trays are cold shelf trays. So let's take a look at the germination here. 
So I'm seeing a lot of these radicals driving down into the medium, which is a great sign. This means we're getting solid germination on what appears to be all of these trays. So I am really quite happy with that. I'm just checking the top one as well. Yep, so everything looks at, like it's about at the exact same stage of growth, which is the radicals have come out and they're beginning to dive down into that medium. Now let's take a peek at the white trays, which remember are our heat mat trays. Looking at the trays, so we're actually seeing some of these sunflowers now completely out of their seed holes and still really driven down into the medium. What I kind of want to do real quick, let's take a look at both of these root systems real fast. Oh yeah, just, I mean, looking at the growth here between our bottom trays, you can see so much more germination on our heat mat trays than you can our non-heat mat. Now let's take a look at these roots here. So we have a few on the cold and then substantially more, I can't really see, <laughs> but from what I see, it looks like there's a ton more uh, roots over here on this heat mat side. So I think that we're definitely getting a lot more solid germination over here. Now the question is, is that going all the way up to the top? So let me get this put back on top. Let's just kind of check this. So again, I'm seeing all that kind of growth like we saw on our bottom one, which was a lot of these have already dug down pretty good into the medium. And I'm noticing a lot of moisture on the top of these, which means that heat is rising and we're causing condensation. And even on this top one, you can see it's pretty wet when compared to, this is the non-heat mat and this is the heat mat. You can see how much condensation is kind of hanging out in the middle of this one, how it looks really wet still. And this one's, it's got a little bit of uh, dew on it, which is really quite nice, but definitely a lot more condensation on this one. Let me take this off set these aside and let's take a look at our top trays side by side and see how they look. So appearance wise for the top trays, we're not seeing, it's definitely not as substantial as the very bottom tray. Let's take a look at the roots real quick. Here, let me scoot these apart so that I can actually see here. So again, we do have some good roots coming out of our non-heat mat. And I would say they're pretty close actually. I would say this is uh, fairly close. We're not seeing that heat rise up super substantially all the way to the top, though I do think it is helping a little bit here. Um, how we could probably make this a lot better is by rotating these, but we're not gonna do that for this experiment. We're just gonna leave this. So that's it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow and we'll do another look at this. Today is day three of the sunflower heat experiment and I am really excited because today and tomorrow we're probably gonna see the biggest difference between the cold trays and the warm trays for this test. Before we get into that though, be sure to smash that like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys are feeling extra generous, please click that subscribe button and make sure you click the notification bells to get notified when new videos come out. Now let's get into the results for this test. Let's take a look at the cold trays first. So let's start down here at the bottom on this one. I am seeing a lot of great germination here. A lot of the radicals have dove down into this medium and it looks like we are getting some great growth. I'm gonna kind of lift up and let's take a peek at these roots also. Oop, try to do this one-handed. So it looks like we're having a lot of roots popping through, which is really awesome. I'm very happy with how this is looking thus far, and let's make sure that everything else is kind of looking the same. So again, same thing on the second tray, we're seeing lots of great germination. We haven't really got a lot of these seed holes off of the cotyledons yet. There's only a few that have really freed themselves from their shells. The majority of them are still kind of pushing their way out and really digging down into the medium. Overall though, I'm very happy with this growth. This looks super solid for coca coir, and this is something that we should expect of this. Now, let's take a peek at our heat mat. So I am seeing a huge difference here. A lot of these cotyledons have already pushed out, and we are actually getting some really great germination out of all of these trays. I can actually feel the heat coming off of this tray whenever I lift and remove these from each other. And actually on the side over here, I can feel the heat all the way up into this top tray Whereas on the cold trays, I don't feel any heat at all whatsoever. So that tells me that the heat is rising all the way up to the top. So again, same thing with the third tray. We're getting great germination across the board. Let's go ahead and do this real quick. I'm gonna set this aside and let's take a look at number three next to each other side by side. So again, this is the cold trays and this is the warm tray. So you can see how a lot of these cotyledons on the warm trays have actually pushed out of the seed holes and we're getting a pretty substantial amount, especially over here on this side. We're seeing a lot more warmth, which is actually pretty surprising because I can feel the warmth on this side a little bit more than I can on this side of the tray. So I can see that you're really seeing that benefit of heat over here on this side of the tray. And again, over on the cold side, we're getting really great germination, though we're not seeing all the cotyledons coming out. We're seeing a few, like here and here, we have a few that are kind of popping out of their seed holes. 
So they're, they're close, but there's definitely an advantage here on the heat side. Let's go ahead and do the same exact thing for the top tray for both of these. Okay, now at the top tray, again, I'm seeing pretty close germination here. So you gotta keep in mind that the heat's rising from the very bottom all the way to the top. And I think that we're getting a slight advantage on this side, though it is really hard to say. I do see quite a few of these cotyledons that have pushed out and there are no longer any seed holes. And that's kind of my indicator that they're germinating faster. On this side, I see a few similar to it, but not as many as I'm kind of seeing on this right-hand side of this tray. Overall, I think the germination on both of these are really great. Let's take a look at the very bottom tray because I think that's where the biggest difference between these is gonna be. And you can see here on the bottom tray, the huge difference in growth because of the heat added to this side and no heat added to this one. You can see just how much more yellow is popping through. That means a lot of these have really begun to grow and have pushed off a lot of the seed holes. Whereas on this side, you see a lot more of the black, which is those seed holes still kind of hanging onto the cotyledons. These guys are probably gonna be ready to go into blackout tomorrow. And I'm really excited to see that. Let's take a look at the roots side by side here. I'm gonna spread them out just a touch so that I can kind of get in there and see. So as for a difference in roots, it's really kind of hard to see here, but I'm not seeing too much of a difference at all. Where I'm really seeing the major difference is on the top where these cotyledons are really able to push off the seed holes and starting to grow upwards. That is it for today's update. I will see you guys tomorrow and we'll take a last look at the growth to see if this heat group is really gonna crush it compared to the non-heat group. All right guys, today is day four of this sunflower heat mat experiment and I'm excited because today is probably gonna be the last day for this experiment. So we're gonna start by looking at the top tray all the way down to the bottom tray and we're gonna compare the growth and the germination all the way across all four of these trays. Let's go ahead and start with our very top tray. So if you can recall, the pink trays are cold trays and the white trays are heat mat trays. As for the growth on these top two trays, let's get them a little bit closer here. So I'm not seeing a huge difference here. I do feel like these on the heat mat tray have lost more of the seed holes and they're standing up just a tiny bit higher than the uh, non-heat mat tray. So that tells me that this potentially had slightly better germination uh, than this side. So this is the top of tray four. So let's go ahead and get these moved out of the way and we're gonna move down to level three. All right, so now we are on level three, tray number three for these. And I'm seeing a pretty huge difference here. I think you guys can probably notice that as well. I think that the heat mat side does have a pretty substantial head start and uh, growth on this tray compared to the non-heat mat side. You can see how a lot of these cotyledons are free from their seed holes, they're ready to stand up, so all this is ready to go and black out. Though we do have a slight poor germination on this side, but I think this is because it was a cold side and this is where the fan was coming from uh, for both of these tray sets. As for the cold side, again, great germination, but it is clearly behind. We have a lot of the seeds uh, still stuck to these cotyledons and my kind of quick visual representation is I'm seeing a lot more yellow on this side which means that I have a lot better germination because that means there's less seed holes and more uh, cotyledons kind of poking out there. So overall I'm gonna have to go with the heat mat did make it up to level three as well and we did get better germination. So let's get this moved out of the way and check out level two. All right we are on level two and it's same thing. I'm seeing a huge huge difference here. I see a ton of yellow on the heat mat side which means that we are very far ahead in the germination compared to the non-heat mat side. The non-heat mat side has a lot of these seed holes still stuck onto these cotyledons and the, the germination is good and it's what I would expect for this space but you can see that we are way ahead on this uh, number two tray right here with the heat and a lot of the cotyledons are free. A lot of the crop is ready to be standing up. In fact, this was probably ready for blackouts maybe last night even, I would say, but still the growth on it is super solid and I'm really happy because we've gotten rid of probably 98% of the uh, seed holes on tray number two. And on to the finale. This is the probably most important tray because this is the one that was directly on the heat mat. So this is tray number one. And again, the same thing. This is a huge, huge difference between these trays. So when it comes to sunflowers, we're seeing a massive advantage on the heat side and a one day advantage on sunflowers is massive because it only takes about six to eight days to grow sunflowers to harvest. So shaving one day off is a massive percentage gain in time gained. Uh, by using heat. So let's go ahead and take a peek and look at this again more closely. So I'm seeing the same things that I saw on the other 
uh, three sets of trays where the non-heat mat side does have a lot of the seed holes still stuck to this and the germination is probably, I'd say a day, maybe a day and a half, two days behind uh, the actual heat mat side over here. The heat mat side is looking great. There's a few seed holes still kind of stuck on, but for the most part, we're seeing a ton of yellow and a lot of stem, which means that this is ready to go into the light and the growth is super solid. The germination is really, really great. So the whole point of this video was to see how adding heat to stack trays would affect the germination throughout all four of the trays while stacked. I think that we saw a clear advantage on the entire heat side, though I would say it slightly diminished as we went higher and higher throughout the trays. The way that I think this could have gone better is if throughout this process, maybe halfway in the germination cycle, we had rotated the top two trays down to the bottom and the bottom two trays up to the top. I think that that would have provided us with a lot more even germination throughout all the heated trays. Sunflower microgreens are one of the most popular crops and they're one of the fastest growing, providing some of the highest harvest weights. So I think that adding heat during the actual stacking process for commercial growing and getting a one day advantage on the growth time is absolutely massive. Again, like I said earlier, considering it only takes six to eight days for this to be ready for harvest. Okay guys, that is the end of this experiment and we are not gonna follow this all the way to harvest day. If you're interested in seeing a test where we grow sunflower microgreens on heat versus no heat, all the way to harvest day, we will drop a link to that video in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Also, let us know what crops you guys would like to see in the test like this next. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms, and we have a website that we're constantly updating, and it is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you so much, and keep on believing.